Section one of the Sad Years. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sad Years by Dora Sigerson Shorter. Preface entitled Dora Sigerson A Tribute and Some Memories by Catherine Tynan. To think of Dora Sigerson, and it is a poignant thought takes one back to Dublin in the 90s, or the later 80s. I think it was on a summer Sunday in 1887 that Dr. Sigerson came to see me with his two daughters and Rose Cavanaugh, whom I already knew. The Yeatses were there that Sunday for the big meal at a most unfashionable hour, which was a feature of those years for the young writers and artists of Dublin. My old home was in the country, just under the Dublin mountains, and, I think, a very delightful place. Everyone, of course, knew Dr. Sigerson by repute. The house was full of the young that day, with just a sprinkling of the young of heart like Mr. Yates and my father and Dr. Sigerson. I remember that my brother said to me, Miss Sigerson is very beautiful. She was. Her face then had some curious suggestion of the Greek Hermes. She wore her dark hair short, and it was in heavy masses. She had a beautiful brow, and eyebrows, very fine gray eyes, a short straight nose, a warm pale color, and vivid red lips. A little later, the Irish-American Miss Louise Imogen Guiney dedicated her roadside harp to the Sigerson sisters. There in the druid break, if the cuckoo be awake, again, O oh, take my rhyme, and keep it long for the sake of a bygone primrose time. You of the star-bright head, that twilight thoughts sequester. You to your native fountains led, like to a young muse garlanded, Dora and Hester. Dora was indeed like to a young muse garlanded. She was singularly beautiful, with some strange hint of storm in her young beauty. She was so full of artistic impulse and achievement of many kinds, and she arrived at so much of art without any apprenticeship that the word genius seems not inapplicable to her. Our friendship flowed straight on from that summer Sunday of 1887. Dr. Sigerson's house in Clare Street became my headquarters when I went into Dublin from my country house. Dora was always painting or writing or doing sculpture. I can remember her coming from somewhere downstairs to the drawing room at number 3 Clare Street when I was announced, wearing a sort of sculptor's blouse. There is still in her old home, crowded with beautiful things, at least one head by her of a nymph or a dryad, strangely delicate and pensive. I don't think she had read much poetry till John O'Leary, saying her poetry was too introspective, gave her Percy's relics whence the genesis of her fine ballad poetry. If she had any training as an art student for her painting and drawing and sculpture, it must have been very slight. The gifts came to her out of the air, so to speak, real gifts and nothing acquired. For seven good years my life was inextricably interwoven with hers and Hester's. We had the same friends, the same merry-makings, the same tastes and aims. We were of the circle which revolved around the great old Fenian John O'Leary and his not less noble sister. We visited the American poets, Mr. and Mrs. Piat, at Queenstown, where Mr. Piat was American consul. We spent many happy days at Mr. Richard Ash King's delightful house at Waltham Terrace, Black Rock. We wrote for the same papers. Presently, Dora Sigerson and I were together in politics, both Parnellites, when the split came. Together we attended Mr. Parnell's meetings. We went to meet him when he returned to Dublin from the country. We lived through all the passionate loyalty of those days. Together we exulted. Together we mourned. Together we followed our chief to the grave, not thinking upon how she should one day lie near him. Perhaps the best holiday we had together was a scamper through Donegal on some business about the industries for Lady Aberdeen. It was just before I was married. From the time we left Amiens Street Station till we returned it was all pure enjoyment. The people with their beautiful manners, the wonderful scenery, the hotels, the car drivers, the priests, the little towns, the wild lonely places, the great hospitality, all were a delight to her. She was full of the joie de vivre, despite the hint of tragedy in her beauty. She did madcap things, 
like martin ross she could mimic animals perfectly how he laughed when she crowed like a cock over a low wall beyond which was a poultry yard and the real vizier after one careful look around marshalled all his ladies into an inner enclosure i have somewhere a book of that tour with her delightfully humorous drawings she was always pencil in hand we did the whole of donegal within a fortnight and came back blowsed but happy i to my wedding she to the dublin she always loved a year or two later she met clement shorter at our little house in mount avenue ealing one thing i must not omit to mention her passionate love of animals in the old good days in dublin she used to pick up waifs and strays of forlorn doghood and take them to the dog's home the boys in the street used to shout derision at us go on wid your grand hats and ye to be starvin your dog the sense of humor supported us how we laughed and lived together ah well let nothing disturb thee let nothing affright thee all passes only god remaineth for ever and ever i will not speak of her beautiful poetry essential poetry always with a passionate emotion to give it wings it is for the critic no one will say she was not happy in her english life though her heart was always slipping away like a gray bird to ireland she had a very full life and she had absolute devotion and knew what a precious thing she had her breakdown in health was sudden she attributed it herself to her intense and isolated suffering isolated beyond the perfect sympathy of her devoted husband over the events following easter week nineteen sixteen in dublin and the troubles which menaced the country she adored i think she need not have felt so bitterly isolated the spirit of humanity is strong in the good english and the good english are very good but the fact remains that she broke her heart over it all and so she died as she would have chosen to die for love of the dark rosaline end of preface entitled dora sigerson a tribute and some memories by katherine tynan section two of the sad years this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by jeremiah sutherland victoria canada the sad years by dora sigerson shorter second preface entitled dora sigerson by c p curran the finest side of irish life in literature is poorer to-day by the death of doris sigerson from her long residence in england she was known here mainly as a poet of a genius as distinguished as it was personal but when in recent years affairs in ireland grew more critical her great-hearted personality emerged more clearly and shone the more brightly as the situation grew more dangerous love of ireland was with her a passion the events of easter week moved her profoundly she spent herself regally on behalf of her people with brain pen and fortune and at the expense of her vitality the best of the english weeklies said that the rebellion killed her almost as surely as if she had stood with the rebels in o'connell street henceforth she could think of little else of what had died with it and what might live that is no less than the truth she is fairly to be reckoned with the dead of easter devotion to their cause consumed her like a flame into which she flung all her gifts neither few nor negligible she was a true artist eagerly seeking expression for an ardent and manifold personality which itself transcended all her work whether in poetry sculpture or painting her poetry was saluted by the greatest contemporary names in england meredith francis thompson swinburne and the present writer has seen her name as the subject of lecture on the notice boards of the sorbonne what faults lay on the surface of her verse were more than compensated for by its intensity an intensity often tragic stoned by continual wreckage of her dreams but always filled with pity in the songs of the irish rebellion and in her later work generally which we in ireland will always consider her best the passion that consumed her burnt away those superficial defects themselves characteristic of her impetuous spirit the poet of ireland of the wind on the hills of kian dub Dilis, of sixteen dead men will always be remembered on that honorable roll of artists who to the gain of both 
fused with their art the strong love of the people. End of second preface entitled Dora Sigerson by C. P. Curran. The Sad Years by Dora Sigerson Shorter. Read for LibriVox.org. Thou hast encompassed us indeed, O Lord, with these sad years. Where does the failure lie of this thy man made to thy likeness? since within the golden mirror of the sun thou gavest thy sweet loveliness and didst then gather dust to mould him to thy shape and stood him upright on thy holy palm to view his form and praise thy handiwork is this thy likeness then thy perfect mould thy hands thy feet thy voice thy sacred heart a god in miniature of eden made hands 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 tearing grasping slaying cold stiff still soothing strangling praying feet 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 running toiling stamping crushing killing falling stumbling tramping cries 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 brutal broken wailing sobbing helpless anguished dying failing hearts 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 loving hating seeking hearts of all thy children breaking breaking is this indeed thy man that thou hast made is this thy likeness and are these thy ways o lord of pity quench these flaming hours restore to peace these sad and tortured years wherein thou breakest the frail heart of man or he the heart of god End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Progress, 1914-1918 by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters Oh, I am athirst, said the brown earth, and I would drink my fill have i not slaked thee cried the grey skies from river stream and rill i would have wine said the hot earth red wine from hearts afire lo thou shalt arise cried the fierce sun clad in a new attire my fruit abundant said the fair earth as never seen before gladly shall i bear cried the proud tree that ripe and luscious store my cloth so radiant said the vain earth shall wrap me in its sheen deeply shall we weave cried the slim grass in tender gold and green lo i am athirst said the hot earth and i would quench my fears then thou shalt taste cried the young maid the bitter sweet of tears have i not held them said the old earth the dead unto my heart under my white robe cried the chill wind so a new spring should start men must pale and die said the black earth so men may rise and live and i was born thus cried the great town in blood they slew to give grant to me red wine said the brown earth else do i droop and tire as in the great past cried the pale hills we drank of hearts afire in war have i grown said the fierce earth man against his brother death's sheaves have fed thee said the green woods beast slaying one the other 
I have built my state, said the proud earth, in strife and foul dissension. Thy church uprising, cried the grey rocks, from blood and hot contention. Lo, I am athirst, sighed the brown earth, grant me red wine to spend. As it was in the beginning, said the great hills, and shall be to the end. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October 1915 by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters When the white rose and the red spill their leaves upon the way, Make a scented path to tread through the long sun-haunted day. I half dreaming all forget in the summer's idle grace That the city's claim will come, bid me back into my place. How can I go forth again to the hot and restless town, Where the stranger people pass ever careless up and down, Where convention chills each hand from a kind and friendly hold, here the robin to my call cheerful comes, alert and bold. Summer with her pretty ways now is taking leave of me. Slow the lingering roses fall, softly sings the honey-bee. How can I go back again to the horrors of the town, Where the husky voice of war fiercely echoes up and down? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Question by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters Give me the heavy sleep, the dreamless slumber, Nor shrouded grief nor sorrow will encumber. Let me but sleep as he whose labour hand Hath tilled the sod and ploughed the pleasant land. But, God, to dream, to wake and dream again, Where screams red war in harvesting dead men. Ah, dream of home, of love, of joy, all thrilling, To wake once more to killing, killing, killing. Give me the hunter's hand, the patriot's fervour to hold death naught, or for my land to serve her. Slay and still slay with heart that holds no sorrow for these dead men and all their carnal horror. Was I not one who loved my land for growing, a sweet eager life and pretty things all blowing? How glad these hands to give their toil, how willing, That now, O oh God, grow strong in killing, killing. I never see a young face grey in dying, But from my blade I hear a woman crying, Spare, spare my child, or screams my bullet, saying, Stay, stay thy flight, my father thou art slaying. All summer through I heard from each pale sleeper, Thou shalt not kill. Am I my brother's keeper, I fain replied? And now comes dread December with peace on earth, O oh God, dare I remember, to men good will, am I thy laws fulfilling who run red-handed, killing, killing, killing? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Human Touch by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters
She made roses all the day for pretty ladies' wear All through the patient hours, half into the night; Dragged into a hurried knot all her dusty hair; Eyes foolish with fatigue, straining to the light; Pretty ladies roamed away over land and sea, Talked on foreign boulevard, laughed in gay bazaar, Followed summer's sunny road, planning times to be, Happy hours of holiday as the seasons are. She made roses all the day for pretty ladies' wear, All through the long day, half into the night. Followed all the toiling hours with a dumb despair, Lest they overtake her skill in their hurried flight. Pretty ladies in the park driving up and down, Chatting of the horrid war, strolling on the grass, Shopping long in Regent Street, over cloak or gown, Waving hand or handkerchief as the soldiers pass. She made roses all the day for pretty ladies' wear, Threepence for a dozen such, working to the night. Just an hour of holiday left her cupboard bare. She knew naught of Regent Street or of war's affright. Sudden in a dusky hour came a stranger bird To the frightened city's gloom in her silent race. Flew to drop her evil egg where the slow winds stirred, Wrapping mist from some rich store for her nesting place. But the pitying breath of night blowing from the west Blew the evil bird to go in the smoke and gloom, So that sudden death might bring for the toiler rest. Give her splendid liberty from her prison room. She had never time to weep, dim eyes and holiday. Left her roses all unborn, left the cupboard bare. Now she cried, and rising flung roses all away. Swift as any lady ran down the narrow stair. All the pretty ladies prayed with uplifted glance, Thanked God that each lovely life had not met its doom. She prayed in her prison place for the lucky chance That had saved her sweated life from the restful tomb. Thanked God she made roses still for pretty ladies' wear. Threepence for a dozen such, working to the night, Dragged into a hurried knot all her dusty hair, Eyes foolish with fatigue, straining to the light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road of the Refugees by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters Listen to the tramping, O oh God of pity, listen! Can we kneel at prayer, sleep all unmolested, while the echo thunders? God of pity, listen! Can we think of prayer or sleep so arrested? Million upon million fleeing feet in passing. Trample down our prayers, trample down our sleeping. How the patient roads groaned beneath the massing of the feet in going, bleeding, running, creeping. Clank of iron shoe, unshod hooves of cattle. Pad of roaming hound, creak of wheel in turning. Clank of dragging chain, harness ring and rattle, Groan of breaking beam, crash of roof tree burning. Listen to the tramping, God of love and pity. 
Million upon million fleeing feet in passing, driven by the war out of field and city, how the sullen road echoes to the massing. Little feet of children, running, leaping, lagging, toiling feet of women, wounded, weary, guiding. Slow feet of the aged, stumbling, halting, flagging. Strong feet of the men, loud in passion, striding. Hear the lost feet straying from the roadway slipping. They will walk no longer in this march appalling. Hear the sound of rain, dripping, dripping, dripping. Is it rain or tears? What, O oh God, is falling? Hear the flying feet, Lord of love and pity, Crushing down our prayers, tramping down our sleeping, Driven by the war out of field and city, Million upon million, running, bleeding, creeping. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Herod by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland The Virgin Speaks Draw back the starry curtains of the night, O cherubim and seraphim. Pull back the purple curtains of the night, For I would look once more upon the world, that ere my sorrows made some young delight in bird and bee and each earth flower curled cherubim sancta virgo virginum let me behold a garden rich with fruit the pomegranate in shade of cypress trees vines and wild honey and the small bees lute where aromatic spices fill the breeze seraphim virgo fidelis let me behold again all unafraid fair bethlehem and gray egyptian sands let me but see the spreading cedar's shade where once i hid in half-forgotten lands cherubim mater amabilis let me but watch the little goats that leap on the rough rocks that circle galilee and i would hear the swelling waves that creep to strike strong music from the changing sea seraphim mater admirabilis draw back the purple curtain i would find a people then unborn yet for whose sake i was most blessed among womankind and bore god's son their heavy sins to take upon himself so he in anguish died to teach them all to love and live in peace draw now the starry curtains well aside and all the lights of heaven swift release cherubim mater christi what comes to me from far-off broken years a voice in rama mourning her sad lot great lamentations women's cries and tears a rachel mourns her children who were not seraphim consolatrix afflictorum i hear again from out the singing spheres a mother's scream and all her whispered prayer stabbed by her anguish faint beneath her fears I hide once more upon that far earth there. Cherubim, Regina Matirum. Draw close the starry curtains of the night, lest heaven fade and I forget to pray. Here God is love, we hate nor suffer fight. What Herod lives upon the earth today. Cherubim, Da pacim domine, sustinentibus te, ut profite tui fideles, invenientur seraphim pacem relinquo vobis pacem meam do vobis dicit dominus cherubim and seraphim alleluia end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hours of illness by Dora Sigerson Shorter, read for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. How slow creeps time! I hear the midnight chime, and now late revellers prepare for sleep. 
a last gay voice rings in a passing rhyme and past my door the anxious footsteps creep the little clocks from hidden places call tis one o'clock downstairs the big clock's bell tolls deep and then comes forth the merry chime like laughing children calling all is well tis two o'clock why in the lonesome room this creak and crack if there be no one here whose feet disturb the loose board of the floor whose secret presence fills the dark with fear tis three o'clock O oh God, when comes sweet rest, to sleep, to sleep, within this sleeping house, where all could wake with less fatigue than I, where no one stirs save some adventurous mouse? Tis four o'clock, death stands at my bedhead in meditation deep, with hidden face, and I alone, a coward, alone afraid lest he from his dread brow the shroud displace tis five o'clock within the empty room threading their way the happy dead appear more living than the quick in this still night all whom i loved or held me ever dear tis six o'clock death moves from my bedhead flings high the shroud from off his hidden face o oh, gentle death o oh, fair and lovely shade lift this sad spirit from its dwelling place the clock at seven hear the milkman come loud clangs the gate the room is chill and dark the maid reluctant rising frees the door a dog runs forth with shrill offensive bark the clock strikes eight the curtains pulled aside let in the light so cold so bleak so grey from their dark hiding come familiar things and through my window looks another day end of poem this recording is in the public domain to bid her live by Dora Sigerson Shorter, read for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. Bring to her spring flowers, cowslip and celandine, and bid her hear the blackbird's song. Let pass the sunny hours in her dull room to shine. Lay cherry blossom her thin arm along. Bring all the sweets of June pale viola and rue garlands of fragrant roses pink and white the young birds broken tune the lark spur gold and blue let in the gentle harping of the night when russet autumn comes lads love and lavender fling on her bed go shake red apples down sun-kissed and purple plums the sweet and luscious pear bring her on leaves of crimson green and brown when comes the winter snow then close the shutters tight to hide the falling leaves and stricken tree the silent birds that go through cold and cheerless light and winter's shroud on all life's liberty Bring her the holly bough, and on the glowing hearth let twisted flame and rebel fires roar. Bid laughing children now dance round her in their mirth, and call her fainting spirit home once more. Oh, call her, call her, call her home once more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If You Should Pass by Dora Seagerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King If by my tomb some day you careless pass, A moment grieved by coming on my name, I'll kneel awhile upon the tender grass In some short prayer 
acquitting me of blame. If I reached not your pinnacle of right, or fell below your standard of desire, if to my heart alone my hopes were white, and my soul built its own celestial fire, then let your grief, be it a single tear, upon your cheek in tender sorrow fall. Forget where I did fail, keep only dear the deeds for which you loved me over all. For ah, to hear, poor shade from life shut out, unkindly tongues to trifle with my name, so that remembrance came half chilled with doubt in conversations less of praise than blame. For if thy charity be overstrained and would bring slander where it cannot bless, give me but silence where good friendship waned. Grant me the mercy of forgetfulness. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Two Prayers by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland Lord, when they came and stood upon my way, With one is dead, I paused a while to pray, In brief thanksgiving that I still did live On the good earth that had so much to give. Through my sweet garden softly did I go, To lift some lily's head that hung too low, or bind a rebel rose that sought to stray across my path. More dear were they to-day, when I did live, who might as he be dead. Was ever world so fair, I whispering said. Thank God for eyes, for ears, for strength, for breath, all that he hath not who hath tasted death. But when they went in silence, to my heart their pity pierced. Then came the poison dart, with he is dead. I flung me low to pray. Lord, I have watched through the uncertain day, when he was far, and every throbbing hour, half lost in fear the joy of bird or flower. And a new alarm I found, did some sharp cry, come from the street, or did a foot pass by. Swift in its going, all did threaten him. Hear me, O Lord, who sip at sorrow's brim. Take thou these eyes, these ears, this strength, this breath, all that he hath not who hath tasted death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mother by Dora Sigerson Shorter. Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. If I should rise amidst the assembled dead, calling for thee, whose fond hands often led me in young years in that far unknown place to help me there and could not find thy face if thou wouldst find that mother who was free to call thee hers as i have need of thee or i stood lost all fear and dread amaze on death's great plains and solitary ways ah no ah no less child than mother thou have I not seen those gentle eyes, that brow, bent o'er me hours less grievous than to-day, when on some childhood's bed I fevered lay? Couldst thou behold me sad and full of tears for those I left, nor chide my lonesome fears with the old smile on thy remembered face, holding me wearied so from life's hard race? Safe in this thought I give myself to sleep, sleep that may wake from slumber yet more deep. So when I rise from all death's dread alarms, I see thy face and find my mother's arms. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. For He Had Great Possessions by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus And I had died before the spring had come, when winter's kiss upon the fields was cold, and no small seed had broken up the land, then had I died, whose earthly hours were told. I should have liked to see the snowdrop rise and pressed my lips upon the primrose bowl, 
to see the thousand spearheads of new grass, but death had called to my half-willing soul. And as I passed, there came the sound of tears, disturbing me and dropping o'er my face. I could not plead for mercy from their grief with, Stay thy tears that chill my resting place. But I returned, in pity for their lot, stood by my bed to see my kindred there. About my house I heard their footsteps go, finding my goods and seeking each his share. My desk, my shelf, my very roof-tree shade they sought for long, and o'er my lands did stray, and then returned and by my corpse knelt down with folded hands to murmur, Let us pray. And as they bent by the mysterious dead, naked of all, from all possessions free, I saw each face and went new worlds to meet, for what was I to them, or they to me? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Seamew by Dora Sigerson Shorter, read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. I had loved the pretty birds that by my window sung, the gentle thrush that had his nest, the perfume pines among, the chaffinch with his sudden note, his song so clear and bold, the sad rhyme of the robin too that came when winds grew cold, the happy lark whose benison fell from the sunny sky, the blackbird with his golden lute that serenaded by, the nightingale that through the night told his low rosary, the finches with their little tunes were all beloved by me. I leaned to hear each lovely note through each enchanted day, and thought no minstrelsy so fine while all content I lay. When to my ear across the sky I heard a seabird's scream, and flapping slow across the blue I saw him flash and gleam. I cared not then for singing birds, I loved the sun no more. I heard the plashing of the waves upon a far-off shore. And lonely, lonely cried my heart in answer to its call. Ah, best I held the sea muse note that had no song at all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Loves Me, Loves Me Not by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Richard Carter I shall rest no more on the fragrant mosses Under great trees where the green bough tosses Scents of lime and the wild rose flinging Sweets to the breeze with their censers swinging I shall count no more as I linger lazy Deep in the mead with the pink-tipped daisy who loves me well and who leaves me lonely, who loves me not and who loves me only. I shall walk no more by the great sea dreaming, secret dreams with the black gull screaming, child of the cliff and the wan wave falling, songless he cries with the bird-like calling. I shall seek no more for the seashell story by the wet sands in the sunset glory. Hear the sea call from the spiral hollow, Soul who is seeking, dare you not follow. Whom have I loved and who loved me only? I shall stand in the churchyard lonely And see the tombs of the dear departed, Read of the love of the broken-hearted, Writ on the stones how they loved them only, Who loved them well and who left them lonely. Yeah. I shall see all the cold white faces Lying still in their secret places. Under the earth goes the last newcomer. What were the life of her winter summer? What if her silent grave holds one only? Who loved her well and who left her lonely? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Swallow by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Rosehip How I hate the sparrows, 
the sparrows the sparrows in and out and round the house all the live long day chirping shrill and fussy birds with their silly petty minds chittering and chattering yet having naught to say how i love the swallows the swallows the swallows coming from a far land of minaret and dome i have got a small room like a clinging cosy nest built upon the gable end of my country home on its wall the swallow's house who can find its secret door such a cunning nursery made with eastern art i can hear the baby ones in their first swift troubled flight giving little frightened cries as they swoop and dart and i hear the swallow folk telling tales of foreign climes in a low sweet lullaby long before the day little brothers of the wind children of the summer time lovers of the summer sky swift you fly away i will dream the lone long hours sick sad days and weary nights if i should grow well again i will follow too see their distant happy homes built with their strange eastern art i shall seek but smiling lands skies forever blue and when swallows come again over all the changing sea back to where their empty nests still do cling and stay i shall have a cabin too hidden neath its golden thatch snow white on a mountain side built of irish clay i will leave the sparrows here all the silly noisy birds in and out and round the home all the live long day chirping shrill and fussy ones with their shallow sparrow minds chittering and chattering yet having naught to say end of poem this recording is in the public domain the secret by dora sigerson shorter read for librivox dot org by jeremiah sutherland I know of a thrush's nest, a pretty nest, a cosy nest. I know of a thrush's nest with three fine eggs of blue. It is in the perfumed pine, the tasseled pine, the swaying pine. It is in the cool dark wood that I have wandered through. I know of a speckled trout, a noble trout, a shining trout. I know of a splendid trout, the biggest I have seen. It is by the lonely mill, the silent mill, the old spade mill. It is in the running brook, for I did look and lean. I know of a pretty maid, a laughing maid, a happy maid. I know of her darling maid, oh sweet she is, and fair. She waits in a garden bower, a rosy bower, a hidden bower. What the way to this dear maid is, neither here nor there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Want to Talk to Thee by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Richard Carter I want to talk to thee of many things, Or sit in silence when the robin sings, His little song when comes the winter bleak, I want to sit beside thee cheek by cheek. I want to hear thy voice my name repeat, To fill my heart with echoes ever sweet, I want to hear thy love come calling me. I want to seek and find but thee, but thee. I want to talk to thee of little things, so fond, so frail, so foolish, that one clings to keep them ours. Whom could but understand? A joy in speaking them thus hand in hand. Beside the fire our joys, our hopes, our fears, our secret laughter, or unchidden tears. Each day old dreams come back with beating wings. I want to speak of these forgotten things. I want to fill thy arms around me pressed, to hide my weeping eyes upon thy breast. I want thy strength to hold and comfort me for all the grief I had in losing thee. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Comfort the Women A Prayer in Time of War by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org Whence comes the rain that ceaselessly doth fall and seems to hold the bitter taste of tears is it the lonely sorrow of the night where patient women shed their hopes and fears where mothers hearts that are too brave to break cry in the silence what they hid by day as from the tear-drenched pillow they arise proud with the dawn and shut their grief away whence comes the rain is it from angel eyes that from the neutral plains of heaven gaze upon this tortured earth they hear us pray and see our strife in pity and amaze calling on him again so crucified in divers tongues each righteous cause to care rage unto rage hate unto hate doth shake the doors of heaven with its impotent prayer and shall my cry be heard that calls so faint through scream of shell and mighty cannon's roar through thunder of the voices that appeal for his protection at god's closed door comfort the women lord my neutral prayer may reach thy pity where those others fail comfort the women in these warring lands who through the battles go helpless and frail dim are their eyes that watch the marching past of all the splendid manhood and strong youth breaking their hearts who are so proudly still lest their beloved should suffer at the truth twas not for this barbarity of war the mother breathless hung by the small cot that held her man-child fearing lest a wind would blow too chill or sun would shine too hot or stayed her swifter feet so he might run not lost behind and with all gentle hand holding him hers who now has left her lone comfort the mothers lord through each sad land protect the women they so helpless slain by each sharp sword that strikes a dear one down who on the battlefield in spirit go without the war's red splendor or renown lord mid this discord of thy christian world mid the loud praying of men's hopes and fears comfort the women let this cry be heard for thou hast known a human mother's tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sinking ship by dora sigerson shorter read for LibriVox.org by k hand the ship is sinking come ye one and all stand fast and so this weakness overhaul come ye strong hands and cheery voices call stand by the ship is sinking in a summer sea bless her but once for all she used to be who rode the billows once so proud and free if you but loved a little with a sigh stand by gone all are gone they neither hear nor care the sun shines on and life is ever fair they shun the struggle laughter lurks elsewhere the ship is sinking passing echoes cry stand by the little ships that pass her in the night speed from the darkness in their eager fright from troubled dreams they take refuge in flight why should they then who know they too must die stand by then get you gone desert the sinking ship o faithless friends who on her pleasure trip 
clung close with gentle words and smiling lip and still as ever on your own joys cry stand by the ship is sinking parting in a smile the sunset waters mark the last sad mile in dimpling play and in a little while the waters close death and his angels cry stand by end of poem this recording is in the public domain nora by dora sigerson shorter read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. Within an English village yesterday I came upon a little child at play. I lingered by to watch the baby game, and heard some voice call gently on her name. Sweet, she replied, how leaps my heart to hear, the pretty notes, the accent ever dear. Shy as the wind soft singing from the south, I, hungry, kiss the brogue upon her mouth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Loiterer by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland When youth, led on by love and folly, strays, Kissing sweet eyes beyond the allotted hour, That he should turn to labor and forget, Beyond his window beauty breaks to flower. O oh, Greybeard! Pause before thy anger strikes those joyful moments from his happy face. They make a glory of his sullen task, and turn his workshop to a godly place. Thou couldst not scold if by thy window wide a mating thrush his love song softly sung, and the green horn of spring blew summer airs that once thou chorused well when thou wert young. Then, Greybeard, chase the frown from off thy brow since time alas will soon belabor him and think what would become of joyous spring were hoary winter to be always grim end of poem this recording is in the public domain the patchwork quilt by dora sigerson shorter read for librivox dot org by rosehip Bring to me white roses, roses, pinks, and lavender, Sweet stock and gilly flowers, poppies mauve and red, Bee flowers and mignonette, with blue forget-me-not, I would make a coverlet for my narrow bed. Bring me no silken cloth, velvet sheen or satin shine, Gossamer of woven lace, gold and silver thread, purple deep and dove and grey through my idle fingers fall bidding me in patient hours make a patchwork spread since i must go forth alone far beyond the roof tree's shade out into the open soon lonely there to lie what want i of silken cloth woven by the hands of men time would soon despoil me there as he passed me by Bring to me white roses, then, roses, pinks, and lavender, sweet stock and gilly flowers, poppies gold and red, bee flowers and mignonette, and blue forget me not, so I have a coverlet for my narrow bed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ourselves Alone by Dora Sigerson Shorter, read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. One morning, when dreaming in deep meditation, I met a sweet Colleen a making her moan. With sighing and sobbing, she cried and lamented, "Oh, where is my lost one, and where has he flown?" My house it is small, and my field is but little, yet round flew my wheel as I sat in the sun. He crossed the deep sea and went forth for my battle. Oh, has he proved faithless? The fight is not won. And then I said, Kathleen, ah, uh, do you remember when you were a queen and your castles were strong? You cried for the love of a cold-hearted stranger, and in your fair island you planted the wrong. And oh, I cried, Kathleen, I once heard you weeping and sighing and sobbing and making your moan. You sang of a lost one, a dear one, a false one, 
oh gone is my blackbird and where has he flown ah many came forth to the sound of your crying and fought down the years for the freedom you pined and how many lie still in their cold exile weeping who sought in far lands your lost blackbird to find and many are caught in the net of the stranger have all but forgotten the sound of your name for other loves call them to help and to save them they fell to dishonor we hold them in shame oh why drive me forth from your hearth into exile and into far dangers your house is my own faithful i serve as i ever did serve you standing together ourselves and alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain the prisoner by dora sigerson shorter read for LibriVox.org by rosehip all day i lie beneath the great pine tree whose perfumed branches wave and shadow me i hear the groaning of its straining heart as in the breeze its thin leaves meet and part like frantic fingers loosened and entwined i hear it whisper to the sighing wind what of the mountain peaks where i was born as sharp tears drop i feel its falling thorn i see in the far clouds the wild geese fly homeward once more free in the storm-swept sky back to the land they loved all all have gone how swift the flight by joy and hope led on what of the mountain land where i was born i cry they pass glad in the dawning morn home to the moon-pale lake the heath-clad hill and give no thought for one imprisoned still all day i lie beneath the sad pine tree whose groaning branches wave and shadow me chained to the earth the dark clay of the grave in helpless fashion feel its wild heart rave free set free i hear its moaning breath where liberty means naught alas but death ah freedom is but death end of poem this recording is in the public domain sick i am and sorrowful by dora sigerson shorter read for librivox dot org by rosehip sick i am and sorrowful how can i be well again here where fog and darkness are and big guns boom all day practising for evil sport if you speak humanity hatred comes into each face and so you cease to pray how i dread the sound of guns hate the bark of musketry since the friends i loved are dead all stricken by the sword full of anger is my heart full of rage and misery how can i grow well again or be my peace restored if i were in glenmalure or in enniskerry now hearing of the coming spring in the pine tree's song if i woke on arran's strand dreamt me on the cliffs of moher could i not grow gay again should i not be strong if i stood with eager heart on the heights of carantuil beaten by the four great winds into hope and joy again far above the cannon's roar or the scream of musketry if i heard the four great seas what were weariness or pain were i in a little town ballybunion ballybrack laughing with the children there i would sing and dance once more here again the storm clouds roll hanging over lugnaquilla built dream castles from the sands of killarney's golden shore if i saw the wild geese fly over the dark lakes of kerry or could hear the secret winds i could kneel and pray 
but tis sick i am and grieving how can i be well again here where fear and sorrow are my heart so far away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Home by Dora Sigerson Shorter, read for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. I want to go to the heather hills, to the heather hills and rocky shore. I want to climb to Ben Edo's heights and to smell the sea once more. I want to talk by an Ulster hearth where welcome ever a stranger finds. I want to stand on a Connaught hill and sing to the four great winds. I want to see on a Kerry moor the purple turf smoke coil and soar. I want to hear a soft Munster voice that sings by a cottage door. I want to go to the Leinster hills, to the Dublin hills by the rocky shore. I want to climb to Ben Eder's heights. I want to be home once more end of poem this recording is in the public domain i saw children playing by dora sigerson shorter read for librivox by jeremiah sutherland i saw children playing dancing in a ring till a voice came calling calling one away with sad backward glances she went loitering hoping they would miss her and so cease to play. Pettishly and pouting, tis not time to sleep. Sobbing and protesting, slowly she did go. But her merry comrades, they all run and leap, feeling not her absence, heeding not her woe. So as I went chatting through the city's hum, with my old companions laughing on the way, came a voice low calling, calling me to come, to my lonely sleeping, leaving work and play. With sad mournful glances do I look to see if a heart should loving pause and turn aside from the happy circles and then come to me. Sighing, do not leave us, still with us abide. No, they are still playing, chatting in a ring, eager voices seeking other games to know. Lone I go protesting, hear them laugh and sing, feeling not my absence, heeding not my woe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Student's Song by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland Air, wrap me up in my old stable jacket. When I was a merry young fellow, I loved the red juice of the grape. I would drink till I grew gay and mellow, from Morpheus I could not escape. I would give myself freely to slumber, nor feared to go lonely to sleep. I was lost for dark hours without number, my soul to oblivion would creep. Then why do I now shake and tremble, as death comes to bid me lie still, in a silence that sleep doth resemble, who sought such a slumber at will? Then death be your cup but the stronger, for why should I fear me to sleep? For I shall but slumber the longer, and drink but a little more deep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tree Uprooted by Doris Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox by Jeremiah Sutherland The earthbound giant now is free, is free, The last fight over and the last moan still, No tale of snow-clad heights where great dreams be, His exile heart can thrill. Ah, how he cried with groaning branch and bough, For that far land beyond the sunshine morn, for that lost joy tilled earth will not allow that land where he was born ah how his heart that fought for freedom pined his leaves like restless fingers tried to hold the trailing garments of the passing wind his struggle manifold the four winds heard and strove with mighty hands to bear him back to that far northern height where he was born loosed from his earthly bands he poised a moment's flight then to the wind in passionate embrace his branches moved, 
outsung his parting breath he leaned to freedom from his prison place whose freedom was but death better so lie from this dire bondage free o heart who knew the silence of the snows than stand alone o solitary tree where english greenwood grows better to die than live in dull disgrace o soul that dreamed the glory of the dream to be for sparrows but a resting place who heard the eagle scream end of poem this recording is in the public domain migratory birds by dora sigerson shorter read for LibriVox.org by jeremiah sutherland i have listened for the beat of slow wings across the sea in their strange and dumb retreat from their foreign liberty come the birds from northern lands where the russian sleigh-bells chime from the hungry desert sands of a southern clime come the birds where eastern air pierced by lofty minaret echoes far the turkish prayer of a god we half forget in my garden i have strayed through the warm sweet days of spring bent to each small nest delayed by the young birds fluttering to the soft song-laden wind lent in hope and half in fear one low perfect note to find in the joyous tumult here there's no bird upon the wing there's no fledgling in the nest there's no song where others sing more glorious than the rest is he caged without release who makes all lovely things to be what holds the gentle bird of peace god's hand or human frailty end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dead soldier by dora sigerson shorter read for LibriVox.org by k hand where the sword has opened the way man can follow look they come the triumphant army over yon hill see their weapons peeping still i spoke not but my wheel sent turning i closed my eyes for my heart was weeping my heart was weeping for a dead soldier who is he who looks towards me tis no man but a gay flag flying red was his mouth and his white brow thoughtful blew his eyes how my soul is crying my soul is crying for a dead soldier kneel ye down lest your eye should dare them kneel ye down and your beads be saying lord on their heads thy wrath deliver this is the prayer that my lips are praying my heart is praying for a dead soldier best cheer the path of the men victorious for he is dead and his blade lies broken his march is far where no aid can follow and for his people he left no token he left no token the dead soldier the way of the sword a man can follow see the young child with his gold hair gleaming when falls the oak must the acorn perish he lifts the blade and his eyes are dreaming he dreams the dream of the dead soldier end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Fantasy by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand I saw winter neath a spindle tree. She plucked berries bright to crown her head. She was singing little robin's song, while wild beech leaves round and round her spread. I ran home into my little house, pulled to the shutters, barred up the door. I knelt down to blow the fire to flame. Great dark shadows danced upon the floor long-legged shadows came from corners drear leaped up white walls fell and climbed again i hear north wind pushing at the gate i won't open not for wind or rain oh run home wee ones lest the whirling leaves take ye far away fairy folk to see crowning her dark hair with berries red i saw winter neath a spindle tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain the queen by dora sigerson shorter read for LibriVox.org by k hand i saw her many years ago my gladness and my grief she stood amongst the barley fields to bind the wayward sheaf she walked upon the mountain side to draw the brown turf home she planted many famine crops within the peaty loam from rugged rocks and silver shore she gathered gray slow keen 
She made the green earth brown again, and made the brown earth green. She wearied in those striving years, from morning until night. Her fields grew wide, her stately home shone in the morning light. But, oh, those hours of yesterday, Mo Storine and Mo Cree, I saw her turn her face away to hide her grief from me. I flew to her a while ago, my thousand joys so dear, for ruin fell upon her house, and I was full of fear. I saw wild fury seize her home, I heard a red wind scream. I saw the groaning roof-tree fall, the flame on wall and beam. I fell upon the broken way, struck down by chill despair. My life's long love, my only joy, my dear beyond compare. A thousand souls will bleed with mine, a thousand hearts expire, To see so fair a form as thine upon a martyr's fire. From out the glow, from out the flame, from ruin fierce and wild, I saw her come with dancing feet and glad face like a child. Her red-gold hair, her snow-white brow, her gown of silk and green. Out through the ruins of her home she walked as would a queen. Ni Houlihan, ni Houlihan, she came a splendid queen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sacred Fire by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus They lit a fire within their land that long was ashes cold. With splendid dreams they made it glow through in their hearts of gold. They saw thy slowly paling cheek and knew thy failing breath. They bade thee live once more, Kathleen, who wert so nigh to death. And who dare quench the sacred fire, and who dare give them blame? Since he who draws too near the glow shall break into a flame. They lit a beacon in their land, built of the souls of men, to make thee warm once more, Kathleen, to bid thee live again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. They Did Not See Thy Face by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand Some on the pleasant hillside have thought they saw thee pass, as flings a cloud before the sun a shadow on the grass. They praised thy fairness, and held dear thy meekness and thy grace. They only saw thy shade, Kathleen, they did not see thy face. Some on the purple mountain stood to see thee speeding by, as glides a sudden golden shaft across the stormy sky. And these were braggarts of their love within thy dwelling place. They saw thy beauty, rose and dub, they did not see thy face. But some in flames of battle strove their slender weight to throw against the bayonet and the gun that hid thy only foe. They left for thee their earthly loves, these heroes of thy race, and died as all must die, Kathleen, who once have seen thy face. So must thy grief be ever new who holds a love like this, that thrusts away a dear one's heart, a little child's soft kiss, that leaves behind an honored home, a mother's fond embrace, Till others seek again, Kathleen, to see thy hidden face. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wreath by Dora Sigerson Shorter. Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. Easter 1917. Here on my path, by some hard fate struck down, when life at last held out full hands to me. When the great dreams of younger years awoke, And dear dead voices whispered liberty. Ah, cruel blow from which I stricken rise, And blindly stagger for that path again. I wonder if tis worth the striving now, Thus robbed upon life's highway and half slain. Here I awoke to fear again the dead, Whose tender faces held me as I slept. Ah, well, I knew who leaned above me there, into whose arms so pitiful I crept. And I awoke, for spring did cry, Arise! For birds within the green woods carol clear. Then Easter came with wreath of lilies pale, Placed on my heart the grief of yesteryear. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. The Defenders by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland Leave me my dreams and I shall not repine. Youth's eager hours, love's restless holiday. Leave me my dreams, a castled garden mine, Where all unchid my wandering feet can stray. Leave me my dreams, the foe is at my door, Time's swinging scythe and disappointed years. Leave me my dreams, and they can yet restore The crumbling walls where crouch invading fears. Leave me my dreams, nor can rude sorrow break Into my fortress where content I go. Leave me my dreams, and who dare combat make On youth's sweet hours, or lay hope's castle low. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song for Evelyn by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org Sing a song for Evelyn, only two years old, Running laughing on life's path in her willful way. Christ child, whom on Mary's knee her loving arms enfold, Let thy little angels come with this babe to play one to guide her either hand so what deed it do it shall neither give nor take grievous hurt or pain let these little fingers pull blossoms fair and true for the glory of thy feet without thorn or stain one to whisper songs of joy in her listening ear so the sad world's bitter cries reach her but afar so that evil on his way finds no welcome here let but white words come to her where thy angels are one to guard her dimpled mouth laughing in its glee so it say no cruel words nor let anger call let it make for all who hear golden melody so it raise some stricken heart where the tune may fall one to keep her baby eyes from despair and tears let them find the lovely things of thy wondrous ways so they grow not dull with grief or too bright with fears let them see but splendid deeds meriting thy praise one to guide her wilful feet lest they lose the way on their perilous woman's path where such dangers be guide her little baby feet so they never stray far from where thou art a child held on mary's knee one to bless her every deed every thought new-born bless her in the summer time and in the winter's cold bless her in the dark of night and in the dawn of morn this is the song for eveline only two years old end of poem this recording is in the public domain the comforters by Dora Sigerson Shorter, read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. When I crept over the hill, broken with tears, when I crouched down on the grass, dumb in despair, I heard the soft croon of the wind bend to my ears, I felt the light kiss of the wind touching my hair. When I stood lone on the height, my sorrow did speak, as I went down the hill, I cried and I cried the soft little hands of the rain stroking my cheek, the kind little feet of the rain ran by my side. When I went to thy grave, broken with tears, when I crouched down in the grass, dumb in despair, I heard the sweet croon of the wind soft in my ears, I felt the kind lips of the wind touching my hair. When I stood lone by thy cross, sorrow did speak, 
When I went down the long hill, I cried and I cried. The soft little hands of the rain stroked my pale cheek. The kind little feet of the rain ran by my side. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Black Horseman by Dora Sigerson Shorter. Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. Lift me up from this bed of sickness. I am going out to meet the summer. I will run into the arms of sunshine and be so comforted the first newcomer. I will lift you up, said the black horseman. I shall climb over the lone hilltops. I shall sail unto the far places. Eat of wheat and bread and the wild honey. See the dark eyes of eastern races. You shall come with me, said the black horseman. Lay me down on my bed of dreaming. It is best, for am I not too weary, walking the white wide roads about the world. Here night is not too long, nor day too dreary. Do you not fear me? said the black horseman. Why should I fear when there are friends before me? I grow old who used to roam enraptured. Yet I am young for even more exploring, whose day is o'er and each wild joy is captured. I am the best adventure, smiled the black horseman. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Other Side by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus What will you do through the waiting days? What will my darling do? Will you sleep? Or wander in those strange ways until I can come to you? Do you cry at the door as I cry here, Death's door that lies between? Do you plead in vain for my love, my dear, As you stand by my side unseen? Who will comfort your difficult ways That were hard to understand, When I who knew you through all your days Can give you no helping hand? When I who loved you no word can speak, Though your ghost should cry to me, Can give no help, though my heart should break At the thought of your agony. You were shy of strangers, And who will come as you stand there lone and new? Through the long years when my lips are dumb, What will my darling do? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Palace Gate by Dora Sigerson Shorter. Read for LibriVox.org by Jeremiah Sutherland. Halt, who goes there? Tis for the newborn king. In long processions, see what gifts we bring. Here cometh care with sheaf of troubled years, and here is grief with dish of women's tears. Frail glory, too, holds out her heavy crown, And joy comes pale with merry eyes cast down. Sweet love drags slow by passion's eager feet To make alarm into a swift retreat. Here marriage leads the lost-selected wife, And yonder death with the assassin's knife. And as they stood before the palace gate, Now all disturbed to wonder and to wait, A little ghost from out the palace ran, and through the crowd to force his way began. Their mourning garments beat about his face. He thrust black care and glory from their place. Love took one hand, the other held by joy, who ran to safety with the pretty boy. Then soon from far came laughter strangely sweet, and on the floor of heaven running feet. The soldier closed the clanging palace gate upon the crowd who murmured still to wait, Take back your gifts, you may not pass, he said. Hear the bell toll, the little king is dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The House of Cards by Doris Sigerson Shorter Read for LeverVox.org by Richard Carter Oh, the chatter, chatter, chatter Of the things that do not matter little wordy things that clatter, restless feet that pitter-patter, 
all my pretty houses scatter, all my noble castles scatter. See, I build it tower by tower, kingly hall and queenly bower, into skies celestial throwing, spires and turret upward growing, prisoned sunshine for its lighting, rainbow beams its roof uniting, kings and queens and noble people look from turret, peep from steeple, with a handsome knob or two, all the fairy ways pursue. But the clatter, clatter, clatter of the things that do not matter, all the talking of dining and whining, discontented people whining, all my pretty houses scatter, all my noble castles scatter. See from out yon casement shady, leans a fair and lovely lady, gems and jewels flashing gleaming, Tis the queen of diamonds dreaming. She is sad and somewhat lonely. All she lost is loving only. Riches, games were all her passion. She is mourning in her fashion. See, she leans her casement gracing, Watching yonder dark king pacing, Up and down the path beneath her. Does she dream he'll kneel and entreat her? Into love was serenading, at her coldness stay upbraiding. Ah, she wots not he is sighing, only is his fond heart sighing. For dark eyes and nut brown tresses, tis not she his love thought blesses. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Old Proverb by Dora Sigerson Shorter Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand It will be all the same in a thousand years. And in a thousand years it will be all the same, Whether or no women's tears flow, Or battle takes us, to save or to break us, Or man against man, advance but a span. Hideous in anger, tame in death's languor, Shouting and crying, sobbing and dying, on the red fields of war, calling on those afar, mother and child and wife, there in the midst of strife. God, the earth shakes with it, down in the hellish pit, where the red river ran, hatred of man to man. Maddened, they rush to kill, that but their single will, strangle or bayonet him, trample him life and limb into the awful mire, break him with knife or fire, so that we know he lie, dead to the smiling sky and in a thousand years it will be all the same which of us was to blame what will it matter then over the sleeping men grass will so softly grow no one would ever know of the dark crimson stain of all the hate and pain that once had fearful birth in the black secret earth ah in a thousand years time will forget our tears babes in their golden hour seeking some hidden flower will in those years afar play on the fields of war. And as they laughing roam, mother will call them home. Laden with fruit and flower, run they at twilight hour. Cattle will lowing stray, little lambs frisk and play, birds nest in hedge and tree, all in time's victory. Dark o' night, dawn o' day, dark o' night, dawn o' day. Thus in a thousand years time will forget our tears and the lost fields of war. In the good years afar, when the lads silent lie, when women's tears are dry, all the wives comforted, all the maids' grief is shed, crying babes safe and still, sleeping in vale and hill, sobbing of men is mute, and scream of dying brute, on the red fields of war in those good years afar. Only the waving grass where the shy children pass, seeking the hidden flower, glad in their golden hour. And as they laughing roam, mothers will call them home, laden with fruit or flower, run they at twilight hour. Over the meadow grass, slow the moon's shadows pass, only the chirp of bird from the deep hedge is heard. This in a thousand years, payment of blood and tears, horrors we dare not name, it will be all the same. What is the value, then, to all those sleeping men? It will be all the same, passion and grief and blame, This in the years to be, my God, the tragedy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of the Sad Years by Dora Sigerson Shorter